Hey guys, welcome to the Neuro Spicy Mama. My name is Amanda and this is my cooking and product review channel. And if you've been a subscriber for a while, you might have noticed that I have not posted in um, quite a while, especially since I was posting about twice a week, very, very regularly at the beginning of this channel. And there's lots of reasons. <laughs> so, one of them and you know which i talked about when i switched the name from dit dot to the neuro spicy mama was when i got diagnosed with autism and adhd last fall and another reason why i haven't been posting lately is because of having foot surgery and the recovery from that has taken a lot longer than i first anticipated so <clears throat> to talk a little bit more about the autism diagnosis and if you aren't aware, I go into my entire autistic diagnostic journey and what that is like for me on my other channel, which is, I just blanked out for a second, which is I am mind blind and I will link it below. So in today's video, I am going to show you one of my favorite lunches that I've been cooking for myself a lot lately, but I kind of wanted to talk about one of the reasons why I've been struggling to make content for this channel and it has everything to do with autism. So before my diagnosis, I was undiagnosed autistic. So I was autistic and didn't know it. And what happens for what they call high masking autistic people is we have something called the autistic mask and most of us aren't aware of it. Some autistic people before they're diagnosed are aware that they like put on a, like they call it their mask or sometimes they call it their shield or something before they go out into public. But a lot of people like myself had no idea we were putting up this false front to interact with the world. And the problem with the autistic mask is that it is very detrimental to our mental and physical health. It takes a lot of effort to maintain. It's a brain survival technique. It is the brain trying from a very early age to protect an autistic person from being bullied or mistreated. And it kind of course corrects to masking. So for instance, a lot of autistic people do a lot of stimming, which means that like we um, do big movements, it helps regulate our system. But if you are in a kindergarten classroom and you're wiggling a lot, the teacher's gonna put her hand on your shoulder and say, sit still Amanda, sit still. Little ladies need to sit still. And so brain puts that into head and says, don't wiggle. Well trying to force myself to stay still takes more energy than letting myself do my uh, stimming. And that's just one small, small example. This goes into every single aspect of my entire life where when in social situations, I like would mimic what other people did because autistic people don't socialize the same way as neurotypical people or allistic people. Allistic just means non-autistic. So over the years, I was masking and not knowing it. Well, when this happens, what eventually happens to a lot of us and a lot of women are finding out now that they are autistic because research was done only on white boys. So when I was a kid, girls were not getting diagnosed autistic. They were only diagnosing white boys unless you were very high support needs. Little girl, then you might get an autistic diagnosis. As I was going along in life, trying to be somebody I wasn't, not understanding what was going on, Basically, that leads to a burnout because my autistic mask, basically think of it as like code that my brain worked, uh, wrote for itself to operate. And it was always be perfect, always be a good little girl, 
and put other people's comfort ahead of your own. Those were like the three kind of like things that anytime I would do something, it would run through that code for my actions. So I was becoming like a shell of my pers own person. Um, because if you want to make other people's comfort ahead of your own, you aren't allowed to really ever form strong opinions because you don't want to ever offend anybody else. So at the beginning of this channel, it was kind of actually the beginning of my burnout. I was starting to get fed up with not being who I felt I could be in the world. And this is all before diagnosis. I had no idea what was going on. I just knew that I was feeling very trapped. And so creating Dit Dot back then was kind of like a way to be like, this is who I am. I'm tired of being invisible. I'm tired of not being seen by the world. So I created the channel and loved it. It was so good for me. And then through that over time, my kids and I got diagnosed with autism, ADHD, and one of my kids also was diagnosed with OCD. And then we've all been working on unmasking, finding out what are the things that are true to ourselves and what are the things that we were doing to please other people to make us fit into a neurotypical society. And a lot of that um, has affected me in the kitchen. <laughs> so with an autistic burnout, which has symptoms of depression and anxiety, it looks like that. A lot of times it gets misdiagnosed as depression, but it's actually an autistic burnout. Often because your brain is just basically becoming overloaded, it's a mental health crisis. And people who go through a burnout start to have regression of skills. And I started to have regression of skills in the kitchen. And it's been very frustrating for me because cooking has always been a lifelong uh, passion of mine. But suddenly I am struggling in the kitchen. I'm struggling with menu planning. I'm struggling with timing of my dishes. I'm struggling with burning things, over seasoning, under seasoning, these like skills that I had um, because my brain had a mental health crisis. I am now struggling to do these things at the same level that I have always been able to. Some people with a regression, a autistic burnout regression, um, lose skills and aren't able to work the jobs that they had before. Some of them aren't able to drive anymore. I've been fine with driving. A lot of mine has been in the kitchen. It's also been, I've had some regression of skills and some other areas too, um, but that's not relevant to this topic, so I'm not going to go there. Um, so that's affected this channel because, you know, the bulk of the, the videos I do on this channel are cooking. And yet I still have to cook to eat and survive, right? So I have not been able to cook and film at the same time because cooking has suddenly become so much more difficult for me. And I understand if you're not autistic, this might be hard to understand. Or if you've never spent time with somebody who's had a mental health crisis, because it, it is, it is odd to understand. Like I've been autistic my whole life. Why suddenly? Is this all happening and it, it has to do with that masking with pretending to be somebody my entire life that wasn't true to who I was not knowing it again it was brains protection of myself our brains are amazing organs and they sometimes do very odd things um, as a survival instinct but that eventually can't maintain it and you basically just reach a burnout and then the skill regression can happen. So the other thing that is going along with this is, like I said, my kids are also diagnosed. Well, one of the things with a lot of autistic people 
are food sensitivities and sens sensory sensitivities. So my kids with their autism are hypersensitive to food. They really need very predictable, bland foods. This has been a struggle, um, you know, their whole child life, childhood, and I've always tried to adapt cooking so that what they eat wouldn't be spicy, you know, things like that. And then, but I am high, both sensitive to food. I like a lot of textures and crunch, and um, I like different spice levels with my food. And that sensory, sensory experiences for autistic people are very important to how we regulate ourselves. So it's just as important for me to get a sensory experience with food that's different textures and spice levels as it is for my kids to have predictable, bland, consistent, same foods while also trying to maintain healthy diets. So along with this skill regression, I have been working on trying to find ways to cook family dinners that um, appeals to very opposite ends of our autistic spectrum. So what that has looked like in a lot of cases is um, me making creative lunches that are easy to make that are really full of flavor for just myself and my kids make their own lunch. And then at dinner time, um, sometimes that's been like baking up a bunch of chicken and then like green beans and like rice. And then my kids will have that for a couple of days with different sauces that they like to change it up a little bit. So, you know, maybe ketchup one night, barbecue sauce another night, marinara sauce another night. And then um, I've been using the HelloFresh kits to kind of help be able to make two dinners um, because the HelloFresh kits kind of help you along in the kitchen as an accommodation. And so I've been buying those as two portions for my husband and myself. So cooking two dinners at the same time and filming has just been too much. But I really feel like this is so important for other families who are um, autistic or ADHD. And I really want to kind of be able to talk about the accommodations that I've been able to do in the kitchen for myself. Um, but the problem is I need to be able to get myself to a level where I can advocate and share about this. So. That's why I'm doing a sit down video right here, not in the kitchen, just because I can't at this time cook and talk like this in this depth because my brain can't process um, multifaceted like that right now. Like in older cooking videos, I would be able to talk about other topics while I was cooking, but that's again, part of my regression. So I'm gonna stop here because this is already getting longer than I meant to. And I'm going to show you this like super simple lunch that I've been again stuck on. Um, that's another thing like autistic people we we tend to have a comfort food that we'll eat over and over and over for a long time and then one day we'll just be done with it. So I've been kind of stuck on this one. I've been eating it a lot and um, with like variations and then yeah so I'll meet you over in the kitchen. Oh goody, back in the kitchen with you guys. So pre-diagnosis, I kind of sometimes would be a snob about only homemade foods and never using prepackaged foods. And again, that was part of my mask because I had to be perfect. And let me tell you, that's just bull. There's nothing wrong with using prepackaged foods, especially if you have a disability and need an accommodation. So this is like a 10 minute quickie lunch that I love. And I use these plain ramen noodles. So there's no flavor packet or anything. It's just plain ramen noodles. And they come individually packed like this. I don't know, there might be other brands out there. This is the brand that my grocery store uses, Ocean Halo, it looks like. And then I've been using these CPAC popcorn shrimp. And you could do the same dish with um, like a 
frozen chicken and have like a sweet and sour chicken sort of vibe going on, but I really love seafood. So to start, what I'm gonna do is fill a large bowl. This is a large measuring cup with about two and a half, water, two and a half cups of water. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna microwave it for about four minutes. While that's microwaving, I'm gonna take some of my frozen shrimp and put them on my air fryer tray here. Enough for one portion. You could easily double this recipe too if you were cooking for two. One more. Now, well, that's plenty. Okay. Serving size says about 15 shrimp. I'm not gonna count it out. That looks like enough for me. And here's my Cuisinart air fryer. I have a review on this video. I mean, on this air fryer, I absolutely love it. Obviously, any air fryer you wanna use will work. Air fry. I go all the way to 450 and then I set these for about 10 minutes and just let them cook. See, there's some of my HelloFresh recipes. Okay, while those two things are cooking, I've got a very large pho bowl. I love these bowls. I'm gonna add these to my Amazon shop. Um, but again, just a big bowl so that you can toss all the ingredients. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice some cucumber. Okay, hold on. My water's done, so I wanna grab it right away. And I just add my noodles to this water and they need to soak for about four minutes. We'll set a timer for four minutes. So I'm just gonna leave these off to the side and they will continue to soften. So I'm gonna get a couple rounds of these cucumbers and then stack them up and cut them long ways. You can also add mushroom. I'm trying to think what other vegetables might be good. If you've got bean sprouts, I've been having a hard time finding bean sprouts. Bean sprouts would be great. And then I like to buy pre-shredded carrots like this. Put in a handful of those. And I have some fresh mint from my garden. You don't have to put this in here. I just have it growing right now, so mint is good. I like to put cilantro or basil, but mint is the only fresh herb I have right now. But this is also really good without the herbs. And then I have a sweet pepper. So I'm just gonna give it a really quick chop. I do take time to kind of like break it up a little bit. So this is just a pasta server, but you could use a fork also and just kind of help break it up a little bit while it's still softening up. Okay, I think my shrimp is done. So it was really only about eight minutes that it took. I'm gonna turn that off and my timer is about to go off in 15 seconds my noodle timer that is. All right, so again, what I do, it's been about four minutes, but I like to just kind of break it up again. And then I'll usually test one to see <laughs> if it's done, there it is. So if you're making a pretty presentation, you can keep the vegetables out and add them all to the top. Another variation that I like to do, but it takes a little bit more time unless I pre-make them, is add a soft boiled egg to this, just cause I like soft boiled eggs to everything. This isn't any kind of authentic dish. I'm not trying to say this is authentic anything. This is just something that I have been making. And then I kind of take this over to the sink and pour it to capture the last little bit of noodles. Add it in. So now sauce. I like to use a sweet chili sauce, but you can really use any pre-made jarred sauce that you like at your grocery store. Um, or I have made up some really quick homemade sauces by, um, <laughs> sorry, my words aren't working right now. Uh, I have a lot of sauces, a ton of flavored sauces on this channel. I can whip up a stir fry sauce like no one's business. But if that's not your comfort zone, using a pre-made sauce is great. So, you know, to preference that. And then because there's like no salt in here, I do like to add a little bit of soy sauce. This one is a lower sodium one. And then I love sesame oil. So I like to add 
just a little bit of that. And then before I add my shrimp, I like to toss everything together so that the sauce gets all on the noodles really well. And then I add my shrimp to the top and I don't toss my shrimp in because I like the shrimp to stay kind of crispy on top. So as I'm eating the noodles, the shrimp stays crispy. So let me grab the shrimp. So, I mean, honestly, in about 10 minutes time, this lunch comes together and is pretty healthy with the variety of, you've got protein and you've got different vegetables and some carbs. And so, and it's very big and filling. And it's definitely like a lunch you would do at home because, you know, otherwise your shrimp would get soggy. So here's what it looks like. And you got, you know, all your veggies and your noodles and the crispy shrimp. Sometimes I do like to take a light drizzle on top of the shrimp if I want a little bit more, but again, I don't want it to get soggy, so don't do too much of that. All right, let's give it a try. It's so good. It does kind of sort of come out to be almost room temperature because the sauce is cold from the refrigerator. So if you wanted it to be hot, you need to warm up the sauce in the microwave, but I don't mind it. <laughs> and see this fits my needs so perfectly because it's sweet it's spicy it's crunchy it's soft it's just like a sensory explosion in my mouth every time i take a bite and i just love these fast quick lunches <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching and then listening to kind of what's been going on with me. I do hope to keep making content for this channel. I would like to share how I'm doing my dinners because I know that's a struggle that a lot of families have when you have kids with sensory food issues. And um, so I wanna kind of share what tips and tricks have worked for our family. And not everything's going to work for every family, but, you know, you could share things that work for you too in the comments and things like that. Anyway, um, but I can't promise what my posting schedule is going to be right now. Um, I'm posting regularly on I Am Mind Blind, but for this channel, the posting schedule is going to be a lot more limited for a while. And so I appreciate your support and sticking around because it means a lot to me. Bye guys. Okay, I just finished this dish and then something in the back of my brain was like, did I make a short about this? Like, because it's been a while since I've been on Neurospicy Mama. And yes, <clears throat> 39 days ago was my last video, which, oh my gosh, I hadn't realized it had been that long. And I made this dish as a short. That was the first time I made it. 40, so I've been eating this off and on now for 40 days. Now I've not eaten it every day for 40 days, but I've had it a couple of times a week now for 40 days. And in that short, I sauteed the vegetables and now I, as you saw, I'm eating them raw because I always like streamline. Like I'll start out with a dish and I'll streamline. But as you can see, I haven't made very many changes to this dish. I forgot about the green onions. That was a nice touch though.